Good afternoon. You're watching Pills and Trades on 18 Now. I'm Anisha Jain. With me, Sasha Faridi, and for now, the market is holding on. So, 23,400 thereabouts. A little below that, but not much to complain given the kind of run-up that we have seen in the last few days. The good news is that the market continues to build on momentum, and there is no sharp declines that we are witnessing right now. What's outperforming is the banking index yet again. Last a couple of trading sessions we had seen, then Bank Nifty had inched up high by almost thousand points. Today as well, it's building on to gains. Another 200, 250 point gain coming in there. Broader markets are a bit more somber, so both the mid cap and the small cap indices have come off the highest point while they're in the green, but not by a whole lot. In fact, within the stock specific action, take a look at BSC. That massive 17 percent surge coming in on BSC, no less. That's the kind of big traction that we have seen. Of course, uh, the overall exchanges as a basket has been doing well. For instance, MCX is doing well, and then there was that news flow that NSC co-location clearance has been cleared, which means perhaps Dex for the entire um, IPO is also cleared a bit. So that might just be adding a bit of a fillip. But Godfrey Phillips is the stock which is up nine percent since that AGM and clarification of a bit of a family feud is over. We have been seeing the stock trending higher. Trivani Engineering on account of that relaxation coming in for sugar companies is up. Adani Green on account of that big order of 6600 megawatt and then Dixon Tech seven and a half percent gain coming in on Dixon Tech. We did speak with the management about the latest order win that they have done and um, more details will come up for you shortly and we'll try and play a sound bite as well. But a lot of stocks passing around in the trading session. Oh yeah, absolutely. After their wholly owned subsidiary that Spadget entered into that MOU with um, uh, you know ASOS ASIS. Uh, for uh, manufacturing of notebooks, that stock has really been on a tear. In fact, before we take it across to our experts, let's hear out what the Dixon management uh, told us. For us, IT is the next trigger for our growth, and the opportunity potential in IT uh, vertical is is looks very promising. We think the revenue potential can be immense in the next uh, couple of years, but uh, since it will take time for ramp up, stabilization, and all. So next financial year, yeah, potentially it can be uh, revenues of all the brands put together should be somewhere in the range of around uh, three, three to three and a half thousand crores. Potentially, we think the FI twenty seven it can we can have a we can have a very strong revenues in this vertical because uh, generally it takes some time initially to ramp up as well. We feel similarly that over the next uh, anywhere between two to three years we should be able to capture at least ten to fifteen percent market share in this category as well. Uh, with decent amount of backward integration, because the way the whole PLI is structured is that uh, you need to continue to do invest in more backward integration. Uh, so what we have committed to the government is a revenues of forty eight thousand crores cumulatively over a period of six years, uh, doing a capex of almost two fifty odd crores. Uh, and clearly, this large four brands, which are among the top four, top five brands globally, have a combined market share of almost sixty five percent in the Indian market. So gradually and slowly, we'll continue to take higher share of order from these customers, and definitely, this is a as a very large opportunity for us over, over over the next couple of years. I would say. Right. Okay. Let's welcome on board Jonathan Shizel, Nirish Mirani as well to analyze both the technicals as well as the fundamentals of the trading day. Gentlemen, hi. Afternoon, uh, Nirish. Let me come to you first. Uh, good going, I guess. A steady ship holding on to twenty five thousand four hundred. What next? and with a with a little bit of support from bank nifty coming in we are seeing first indications of reversal in a lot of names icici bank hit an all time high you have access bank doing well for the last 3 days you have kotak bank taking a little bit of a uptick and even hdfc bank making a little bit of a swing high so if this continues uh, on the bank nifty we could continue higher on the nifty and now the supports shift closer to 25100 on the nifty and 51400 500 on the bank nifty Those are the you know internals to watch out for. But just marking some more stocks and news right now. Macrotech Developers is in focus because Nomura initiated coverage with a target price of sixteen hundred rupees, thirty percent upside to yesterday's closing. Imami is down five percent. Goldrich Consumers down three percent. That's because the government has raised the basic custom duty on the import. Of crude soybeans, so unflour and palm oil. So some of these stocks might get impacted on account of that. In fact, on FMCG, we did speak with Abnish as well as the management or the former management of Dabur as well. We played out out those sound bites. But before that, Jonathan wanted your take regarding consumption as a basket. Now, overall demographics of India demographics of India are quite strong right now. Um, and rural recovery is also what the people have been talking about. Ah, uh, how should one play the entire consumption theme in India? You believe? 
Yeah, I mean, it's 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 clearly India offers a fantastic um, opportunity in in the whole consumption space. I think, interestingly enough, there's various ways you can play the consumption theme. Uh, nothing too new for me here, really. I mean, financials are a, a broad way of playing increased consumptions. Obviously, as you you point out, some of the actual FMCG companies themselves, another way to play it. There's there's various ways to play it. I think, broadly speaking, that the, the market does offer a lot. Um, from a consumption perspective. So multiple sectors, um, and, a, and it's a very exciting space and has been for some time. Okay, point taken. So that's the view on FMCG. But uh, what will be the impact of this increase in the import uh, duty for some of the edible oils? Let's hear out what Abdish Roy of Novama had to say. Today, of course, uh, the edible oil sharp uh, duty hike has happened. Uh, so what we see is uh, Q2, no impact of that, uh, because already most of the Q2 is done. Plus, uh, companies generally have uh, some inventory. But uh, in H2, we see most of the food companies taking price hike, given uh, there is a sharp inflation in the in the edible oil because of the duty hike by 20%. So that should help overall uh, pricing growth also. We need to see if any impact in the, in the margins, but we don't see much impact, given this is an industry-wide issue. So we like uh, uh, Britannia also in that space. Uh, so we have been quite positive and have a, had a strong buy there. The stock has done well. We expect a high single date volume growth for Britannia also to continue. Nestle we see in the near term slight uh, underperformance given uh, they are facing challenges uh, in the in the in the Maggie portfolio because there is a consumption switch towards uh, other forms of snacks. Even in the nan and lactogen infant nutrition, there is some consumption pressure. So we'll prefer Bikaji and Britannia in that space. Right. Jonathan wanted to get your thoughts in on FMCG because, you know, up until from COVID to now, we've only seen, uh, you know, urban India uh, binge on uh, to the cons consumption spree and, uh, spree. and now rural seems to be making a comeback. Uh, tactically, would you think that this uh, makes for a good investment? And do you actually see a meaningful recovery at play when it comes to, uh, you know, rural spend in FMCG? Yeah, you're quite right. I think um, a lot of analysts have been waiting for this rural spend to pick up for a while. And, and clearly, as you say, it seems to be coming through now. Um, it looks pretty uh, sustainable to me. Um, you know, obviously, it swings between urban and, and rural from a consumption on a short term basis from a consumption perspective. But overall, I, th I think, you know, consumption still remains the cornerstone of, of the India story. And, you know, broadly speaking, it, it looks, continues to look good, good to us, actually. Taken. Nuresh, what's the sense on the chart of BSC as well as Godfrey Phillips? Uh, BSC has seen a single day move out of nowhere. The stock was sideways, making a slow and steady move. So it's more an event move. And the stock has already gone into a new all-time high. So continue to be a, a positive move. It's just that one has to wait for a little bit of a fade off to look out for an entry. Godfrey is a similar case where the stock has been trending for the last one month from 4,500 to almost 8,000 now. The stock has just continued uh, in a one-way momentum. One could only way participate is by keeping a trailing stop loss. Uh, but at current levels, fresh buying would not be a good risk reward. Right. Okay, that's the take coming in on some of the buzzers today. Also take a look at what, uh, for instance, the Sriram Finance is up to. Morgan Stanley, of course, has come out with a note where they've guided for that 16 to 17% growth in FI25 in terms of AUMs. They've talked about, uh, you know, passenger vehicles, MSME, gold loans, as to how all of it will be a key good growth driver for Sriram Finance. For SBI Life as well, uh, you know, they're expecting an 18 to 19 percent individual AP growth for FI25 as they believe growth is only going to pick up further in the third quarter. So these are a bunch of stocks which are, of course, in focus, but not really seeing any material move coming in there um, because I don't think there is any, uh, you know, target change in terms of price target that is on these particular stocks. Other than that, of course, you know, while banks clearly seem to be the flavor, CLSA has come out with a note on Axis Bank. They maintain their outperformance with a target uh, price of 1400 on Axis. So that's definitely one stock which continues to be um, in focus. They're saying they have enough equity capital in the near term and they expect Axis to grow loans uh, three to four points, uh, percentage points faster than what the industry is likely to do. Nuresh, on the charts, which are of the private banks is looking strongest to you? 
So clearly the strongest one is uh, ICICI Bank. Uh, if you look at it in terms of uh, relative outperformance, the only one which is actually hitting a new all-time high. And it has been an outperformer all through the last couple of years. Then if you come down next, it, it continues to be Access Bank, which has done well over the last uh, three, four sessions. But overall, that's been the strength. And next we come to the Lagards, which could actually turn, which is where you get this list of uh, HDFC Bank, Kotak Bank and Indescent Bank. Both have, uh, all these three names have been sideways for the last three, four years. So look interesting. Uh, so the whole basket could be looking interesting, but strongest is ICICI, the weakest is HDFC Bank. Okay, point taken. So that's the kind of uh, momentum in the financial stocks. But time now for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Lots lined up when we come back. Back with closing trades, right here on ET now. Still looking smart. Dixon holding up a good 7%. There's MCX, BSC. The exchange stocks are the ones which are really uh, roaring in the session right now. In fact, MCX is almost pulling through uh, with a 7% gain. And uh, BSC as well will just come up for you on your screens. Uh, that also is now notching up almost 17.5%, no less. There's Nalco, there's Biocon, PVR Inox. These are some of the other buzzers in trade. Vijay Rajani too joins in on the right now. Vijay, hi, afternoon. Uh, what's uh, any sectoral trend that you're picking up? What's looking attractive to trade? Yeah, so Nifty is into a trend only. For last two trading sessions, Nifty is just consolidating, but the primary trend is up and we feel that the Nifty is headed for the targets of 25,525, which is the immediate target. So overall trend remains bullish and Bank Nifty has been outperforming. So we feel that bank duty in the coming days can uh, re, uh, participate very well from here. So one of the bank stock which I like from here is the Indescent Bank, which is forming a inverted bullish uh, head and shoulder pattern on the daily chart. So it looks quite strong. So it can do well from here. So Indescent Bank around 14701 can go long in trading. 1440 should be the stop loss on the upside. 1520 should be the target. The another theme which is working right now uh, is the uh, capital market uh, theme. Uh, so one of the stocks which is related to a mutual funds equity related capital market thing is the CAMS. So CAMS is looking very strong today. Uh, 4480, 4490 should be the entry price. Uh, on the downside, I see a strong support at 4400, which can be kept as a stop loss. And on the higher side, 4700 should be the uh, next target for the stock. So CAMS is looking good for the next three to four days trading sessions. And Indescent Bank is one of the another stock which I like on the long side. Capital market theme, a lot of stocks are actually doing quite well, not just BSC, MCX, but an angel one is up in the trading session. A JM Financial has perked up. You also have CDSL, which is buzzing around in the trading session. Um, in fact, not a similar theme, but PTM as a fintech too is uh, mighty excited right now. There is a bit of an up move of almost 4, 4.5% on PTM as well. Jonathan, the question to you then, financialization of savings is a big theme that has been working in India and it's just expected to accelerate. Do you think it makes sense to invest a part of your portfolio into this uh, financial market ancillaries? Absolutely. Um, I mean, clearly, it's a trend with a long way to go, as you say, um, you know, and there's various ways you could invest in some of these non uh, these non bank financials, uh, which are a direct play on it, or even, you know, obviously, some of the banks as well are, are clearly going to benefit from that trend. But it's definitely a trend that I think um, has further to go, and it's uh, certainly one uh, which India has offered for some time and, and still will offer for some time in the future. Sugar stocks as well are doing very, very smartly. Remember, the government has now allowed sugar mills to produce uh, rectified uh, spirit and ENA from sugarcane juice, and that's really auguring well for the entire space. Uh, Naresh, any trading opportunities? We've seen quite a buzz in sugar already, though. So uh, the smaller names uh, look interesting because they've not done well. So Adampur sugar or Adalmia sugar, which have been at the lower end of the trading range. Uh, so Adalmia Bharat sugar, which has broken out today, above 490 odd levels looks interesting. So I would go with a basket of these names. Uh, many of them have gone through a sideways consolidation for the last two years, some for one year. So in this Dampur, Dalmia uh, could be interesting. Jonathan, just want to, uh, you know, come to you on the entire energy transition theme because, you know, many in the market do believe that this is a, going to be a multi-decadal opportunity and given the vast uh, supply chain and the various uh, 
uh, mediums of energy that are being looked at as opposed to traditional fossil fuels, uh, you know, this could really throw up a, a sizable opportunity for investment as well. Your thoughts? Absolutely. It's, it's a huge, huge transition, uh, which is going to take decades. I think the issue obviously is financing um, and technology. Uh, you know, I, th I think certainly in some markets elsewhere in Europe and the US, there's been a little bit of a pushback about the whole move because of the sheer cost involved and obviously the infancy of, of, of many of these technologies. Yes, some of these technologies certainly are getting more efficient and better, but um, the whole infrastructure that needs to be set up is going to take some time to roll out as well. I think it is an interesting sector. I think it's um, the move towards it globally is um, something which is which is not going to be turned back. But I think it will take time and um, yeah, we, we've time and money. Take a bit of a time, but then which are the themes, um, you know, Jonathan, which you would recommend to avoid a profit book right now because a lot of segments have run up and there might be some sort of churn. Uh, which are the spaces that you think have topped? That's a difficult one. I think certainly when you look at the Indian market vis-a-vis -vis other emerging markets, it's done incredibly well. Um, a lot of domestic retail savings have been going into the equity markets, chasing IPOs. Um, and, it, and it carries on going higher. I think, you know, India just in the short term is at risk potentially of a little bit of a sell off. I'm not saying a, you know, a major reversal, um, but I think some of the hotter sectors, particularly in the mid cap space and, and below, probably need to just let off a bit of steam. Um, I think, you know, when we look, the finance, the financial area still looks good to us. The banks still look good to us. IT globally, the IT sector looks okay i think the trends there are, are very healthy so broadly speaking the broader market probably needs a little bit to come off a little bit but but overall we're still bullish on india on a medium and longer term view ravi dharmshi as well you know we were just chatting with him earlier today about the entire energy transition theme he talked about power solar uh, as to how these could be the you know fuels of the future and that's where the energy transition is actually taking place and what kind of opportunities he sees within the space. Our generation side, there is going to be new sources like uh, solar, wind, uh, nuclear, biofuel. Uh, I think out of all the four technology, it will be the solar that will be the ba backbone of the uh, entire energy transition. Because solar is the cheapest form of energy that uh, humankind has generated probably since the time when we used to uh, you know, rub uh, stones to produce energy. So this is going to be deployed at a mass scale. In fact, even the recent price crash that we have seen uh, is actually an inflection point for major, major deployment of solar throughout the world. A lot of money is going to be spent in the next five, seven years across the world in getting the grid up to the speed, speed to, uh, you know, accommodate for the renewable power that is going to become larger and larger portion of our energy mix. So uh, it is like, uh, you know, before we start selling cars, we have to pave the roads. If the roads are not there, there's no point selling the cars. The power transmission is also similar. First, we have to lay down the wires and the grid before we can uh, move to the renewable energy. And the third piece of it is the, uh, you know, electrification of everything from mobility to logistics, to industrialization, to production, it, everything will be electrified and that will give, a, uh, you know, rise to a lot of energy efficient products uh, and so, so and so forth. Or uh, basically EV in the cars is also part of that thing. So it's a very broad based themes with new technologies on the horizon like uh, green hydrogen, battery storage. And uh, it, it's a large trend that is going to stay in effect for 20, 30 years. And we can move from bucket to bucket over that period and benefit from it. Okay, that's that on some of the energy uh, transition themes that are uh, playing out in the market and Ravi Dharmshi believes are going to play out for the next uh, three decades, if, if not more. Uh, other than that, of course, you know, let's also focus on what's uh, uh, what Bajaj Housing Finance is up to and what a stellar listing this has turned out to be. Uh, it gapped up immediately over 100% premium and continues to maintain that 135% uh, move uh, 
as opposed to its issue price that of 70 bucks 165 is where that stock currently is in fact we should play some sound bites as well from mr bajaj uh, from the listing he of course uh, you know answered a few questions from et now as well in the sidelines of the press conference that they did uh, you know uh, conduct post the listing and that stock will just come up for you on your screens. But having, uh, or rather that soundbite, but having said that, Bajaj Finance is the one which is tempered today. That's down about 3.5%. There's Bajaj FinServe as well, which is also lower by about 2.5% as we speak. So, you know, other than that, uh, some of the other financials as well, which are not looking okay, SBI, for instance, that down also half a percent right now. Reliance too has flattened out a little bit. But uh, here's Sanjeev Bajaj uh, from the sidelines of the Bajaj Housing Finance listing. We've had very strong growth, but this is in the background of a very strong, consistently growing economy. And if you look at uh, credit cycles in India, we expect steady credit growth at uh, 12 to 15 percent in the housing industry. And on the back of that, we are enthused that we can continue to grow strongly. The economy is showing uh, very strong uh, tailwinds, and that's what gives us this uh, comfort. Uh, shareholders should expect uh, a business that grows with high quality, a high level of corporate uh, governance, that brings the right uh, blend of technology in uh, this particular business, and sustainable, sustained growth with uh, high focus on quality of the business and a diversified book is what we look forward to building. So that's the verdict coming in from the management of Bajaj Finance uh, or Housing Finance, that is. But uh, Jonathan, what about autos as a theme? Uh, do you think that has peaked out and this um, entire EV disruption and the kind of policy changes that are happening make it difficult? What's your investable theme as far as uh, autos are concerned? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah the space, the, space, um, the whole EV uh, discussion um, clearly is a complex one. Um, you know, it's particularly in a market like India, where you know some of the roads in the major urban areas are, are clearly already very congested, and the infrastructure still needs to be rolled out. Certainly in the EV side, I think the trend is clearly shifting towards that space, but possibly not as fast as many had originally expected. And then clearly you have issues, other issues around, um, yes, the cost of the batteries have come down substan substantially, um, but it'll be interesting to see if more of the traditional local suppliers in India can, can really step up into this space. So it's a fascinating space. Um, perhaps growth expectations are a little bit too high um, just at the moment. And if you look in some other markets, the, the uh, plug-in hybrids seem to be the solution in the very short term. Right. Okay, we're going to take a very quick break on that note, but as we do that, here's a clarification coming in from the Adani Group, who's refuted the claims around the fake press release during the rounds. In fact, in an official statement, the group has said that certain vested interests with malicious intent are circulating multiple fraudulent press releases, including the one titled Adani Group denounces baseless acquisitions and threats, accusations and threats, I beg your pardon, related to their presence in Kenya. In fact, the company has also threatened legal action against false narratives. Welcome back. Well, the market is holding on all right. What's doing well as a space is, of course, um, energy as well. So, Dani Green, of course, is higher. NTPC has moved up. And then Coal India sector are also doing okay. From the real estate pack, Phoenix Limited has managed to perk up almost 5, 5.5%. PSUs, Pace Bank, at that are some of them are on the back foot, and FMCG too is not having a great day. Quickly taking stock of some of the buzzers from the broader markets and marking the names which are actually seeing an up move in the last few minutes. A few minutes, Glenmark Life had a downgrade this morning, but nonetheless. That stock has been holding okay. Jubilant and Grevia is something which is perking up. And then you have names like uh, Action Construction, do, uh, Construction doing well as well. Divang Mehta also joins us on the show right now. Divang, hi, good to be speaking with you. What's your take on the market right now? Every day we are making a fresh record high. Today was a similar instance. Um, but within this uh, kind of construct, is it better to place your bets on large caps? Or do you think mid cap and small cap have more steam to go? Afternoon, uh, Anisha. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I think uh, the view on the markets is honestly, uh, we, we've been uh, seeing that in the last two, three months that uh, there has been small corrections on the end which are getting bought in. 
Uh, I think what seems to have changed is uh, is the commentary of the managements which we saw in the last uh, uh, result season that they were also getting increasingly positive. Uh, more often than not, what has happened is uh, the past uh, one, one and a half year, it was only CapEx driven businesses which were doing well. Uh, but if we look at the uh, last two months, uh, uh, particularly post the elections and post the budget, even the consumption side of the market has started to do very well. So the absent sectors which were absent uh, in terms of participation like IT or like even uh, pharma, uh, as well as consumption, along with the capex side, has started to do well. Uh, one part which is still not uh, on its complete mojo is is the is the financials, uh, which which of course are trying to make a comeback uh, courtesy the FPIs. I think last week, uh, if there is an indication to be taken in the medium term, uh, there was precisely buying of around two billion dollars uh, from the foreign portfolio investors. So I think there is markets are going from strength to strength, and that's always uh, uh, where I always. Uh, uh, take out this quote uh, from someone's book which says that more money has been lost in anticipating a correction or waiting for a correction uh, than in correction itself. So I, I think probably, yes, uh, so many primary issues getting absorbed, uh, stellar listings, uh, most of the businesses doing well, sector rotation coming to the fore, uh, DII is present, FII is coming back. Uh, I don't see many reasons for market to correct uh, 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 in, a, in a large way. Okay, that's the take coming in on the market right now. Dixon still climbing up uh, almost a 7.5% notch up right now. The market-related themes, the exchange names, they're all doing well. We've been marking the uh, move in MCX as well as BSE. Devin, it's a large pool, right, of uh, the market-linked uh, uh, stocks which are listed. I uh, wanted to understand what are your preferences or any biases? Yeah, so uh, Aisha, what has happened is, in fact, as you rightly said, uh, 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 financials are now probably divided into two parts. One are uh, uh, companies which are sort of uh, market linked or market intermediaries or uh, capital market related themes. Uh, and these themes have done extremely well, right from a, a listed BAC to, to a CDSL, uh, to a lot of these broking firms, to wealth management firms, uh, uh, to even AMCs. I think most of these businesses had their time in the last uh, two, three years. Uh, uh, you are seeing more and more financialization coming to the fore. Uh, you are seeing more and more demand accounts getting opened, more and more people uh, putting money through mutual funds, SIPs, people putting money into PMSs, uh, and more and more people in India generating uh, wealth, right? So the number of millionaires and billionaires are, are on, the, on the upswing. So I think, yes, as a space, uh, we have been bullish on, on depositories, which I talked about, uh, uh, even exchanges, we have been, we've been sort of liking. Of course, there is one listed and another one is still unlisted, but uh, we have been liking this space. In fact, even the wealth management and the broking space. So uh, these are some of the uh, uh, themes that we've been talking in financialization. Yes, there are a couple of themes which are still to perform uh, something like an insurance, which has sort of par performed partly, partially well. Uh, but uh, valuations over there are also seemingly probably a little more stretched. And banks, our banks and NBFCs is one theme which is still uh, not got the run, which it saw three, four years back. But yes, financial intermediaries, wealth management space, uh, uh, broking, and this this probably will do well for the next two, three years uh, till when financialization has probably uh, made a deeper inroad than what it is right now. Should be a medium term theme that you should watch out for. But when I wanted your sense regarding some of the metal names, uh, do you see any of the re-rating candidates? Should it's for you on metals. Yeah. So metal selectively doing very well, especially I like Jindal Steel and Power, which is looking quite strong on the chart and it has taken a lead. So Jindal Steel and Power is looking the strongest to me. Uh, though JSW Steel is another stock which is looking very strong on the chart. So as compared to Tata Steel and Sale, this Jindal Group companies are very, doing very well. So Jindal Steel and Power looks strong to me. In fact, a couple of days back, we recommended to our trading uh, the clients, uh, traders, and uh, it has done well. And still, I think that it is into a trend and it is likely to uh, register an all-time high, which is placed around 1094. So still, I see a 5 to 7% upside in the stock like Jindal Steel and Power. And I can see some uh, uh, sector uh, getting traction again. So sector wise also it is a reversal case and uh, uh, definitely I'm expecting participation from the metal sector in the coming days. So overall I see Jindal Steel and Power doing good followed by GSW Steel and metal sector is also as uh, looks like it is a bullish reversal pattern on the daily and short term chart. So yes, uh, there are many opportunities in the metal sector and one of the stock is Jindal Steel and Power which can be traded now with the uh, 5 to 7% upside target in the short term.
what Macrotech is up to, the house of Nomura, of course, initiated a buy target price of 1600 on this one. Uh, some solid earnings visibility uh, with the right capital allocation strategies is what they're anticipating. And they do expect the pre-sales growth at a 20% CAGR over 20, FI25 as well as 26. But they wound up, it's a well-discovered story, right, real estate. Where within this are you still uh, scouting for opportunities, if at all, either realty or the ancillaries? Real deep has been a revelation, uh, uh, Aisha, if you look at the last couple of years. Uh, uh, most of these companies have come out of uh, nowhere and sort of started to uh, show sales which they have never seen. In fact, uh, look at the registrations that are uh, happening in Mumbai month over month and also other cities. Uh, and I think most of the most of the inventories are getting absorbed and uh, that to even luxury homes. For example, now Microtech uh, uh, more so operates in, in the luxury part of the world where uh, there are three BHKs and four BHKs and five uh, bedroom all kitchens which are uh, getting sold on, on, on launch dates as well. So I think yes, this this is this still a good time to probably as, as the wealth effect I was talking about in the in the last question on the financial intermediaries, there is a lot of wealth created and people are diverting this also this money not as an investment but they are upgrading their lifestyle and, and, and getting into good houses so yes this theme will do well uh, but to answer your question uh, which type of theme should one play it also something like a fast moving electrical goods uh, uh, which we have been very vocal about companies like Evels, companies like polycap not suggesting uh, as buys but yes these are some of the portfolio businesses that we uh, hold since long and these are companies which will tend to uh, probably do very well uh, we know that uh, most of this fmeg businesses fast moving electrical goods have come up with good set of numbers and management has guided towards a very very strong growth even cement companies uh, though they went through a temporary slowdown but yes still uh, probably if housing as an industry is going to do well infra as an industry is going to do well uh, cement some of the large cement players uh, should also be considered okay point taken so that's the view coming in on some of the ways you can probably play the power sector theme but in the meantime uh, sugar is a space has been buzzing as well we did speak with the isma you know management to talk to us about what they make of the move that we have seen so far and of course the fact that there is an expectation that the ethanol price is expected to come out soon as well they're working with the government for a revision of the ethanol pricing and as per them it can be expected anytime soon as well Devang, what about this entire agri theme? Um, would you be a buyer, let's say, in textile companies, some of these sugar names, this uh, entire ethanol play? Uh, no, not particularly. We, we probably are, are not into this type of uh, cyclical. So on the agri side, if you ask me, yes, uh, uh, we know that there is a rural recovery which is coming back. Uh, uh, a lot of this FMCG players, a lot of food and beverages players are where we have our sites set into. Uh, there are also this uh, agricultural related, uh, I can say, agri uh, as well as uh, specialty chemical companies, uh, uh, companies like PI Industries, companies like uh, Sumitomo Chemicals, uh, which are part of our portfolios. I think these companies have come up with good set of numbers. Uh, again, as I said, uh, uh, we have seen a relatively stable environment coming back uh, again. Uh, we saw two years of, of a deep correction, hibernation uh, for this type of businesses. But with this, I think the agri theme uh, seems to be coming back with that even FMCG, agrochemical type of companies, uh, companies related to agriculture, this all probably should do very well. Okay, from agri-commodities to now precious ones, uh, gold continues to soar at an all-time high. In fact, Ashesha is here to tell us all about what analysts are saying about whether or not it's going to continue at these elevated levels. And of course, factors behind the move. Ashesha? It continues to touch all-time high levels for the second consecutive session. In fact, on Friday also it touched all-time high levels and today it has crossed that $2,580 per ounce mark and what a rally it has been. On a year-to-date basis, gold is now up nearly 32 odd percent and in the last one month alone, we have seen gold rise by about 3.5 to 4 odd percent. Uh, buying by central banks globally, softening US dollar and apart from that of course we have that all important Federal Reserve meet on the 17th and 18th of September and hopes of a 25 basis point rate cut is also leading to the rally in gold and apart from this high demand uh, in the O2C market of gold is also leading to the surge. In fact, Goldman Sachs believes that the run-up is expected to continue. Even after the run-up that we have seen over the last few days, they expect $2,750 uh, per ounce is the target that they've given for early next year. It continues to be their preferred long-term bet and it also is a good hedge against inflation and economic uncertainties that the world is facing. So yes, a positive report that has come in from brokerages and gold continues to scale past uh, that $2,580 per ounce mark.
Okay, point taken and yes, gold is definitely glittering in the trading session, has been inching towards uh, record highs, has been making actually fresh record highs as well. Um, the other theme, however, has been crude coming off and the fact that it has stayed between that 68 to 72 dollar a barrel. So uh, the top beneficiaries, of course, is the aviation sector. Today you had Jefferies adding Indigo in their model portfolio as well, paint companies, etc. In fact, we did speak with the management of Axo Noble as well. When I wanted your take regarding a couple of these big sectors, uh, paints, while there's a tailwind of uh, crude, uh, you know, crude coming off, seems like the volume pickup hasn't really uh, been there. So what's the take on the charts? This Asian paint and budget paint, which are the biggest company in the paint segment, uh, they have shown a uh, spectacular rally and they are sustaining at higher level, making higher tops, higher bottom. So this time, I think this paint companies are going to sustain and looking for the uh, larger gains. So definitely from the lower levels, from the low, which was seen in the May 2024, Asian paint has risen significantly. From the low of 2638, it has risen to 3337 right now. So in last five months, Asian Paint has given and registered a very good rally. But still, I feel that this is a, a bullish reversal case and uh, the FMCG space, I think the paint companies are going to sustain and going to give good returns. The another thing which is likely to get uh, uh, benefit out of this is the uh, tire stocks. So in tire segment, I like C8 a lot. So C8 is looking very strong, very resilient also. If we compare it with the other tire stocks, C8 has been has been very strong. So C8, which is trading at uh, 3,000 odd levels, I'm, I think that it is going to go, uh, do very well in, in the coming times. So we can expect 8 to 10 percent upside in the immediately looking at the technicals. So I'm bullish on C8 Limited, which is going to benefit from the lower crude price and uh, 10 percent upside could be there and traders can watch out the support of uh, 2850 and the stop loss also. So overall, I feel that paint companies are going to sustain uh, sustain for the bit medium to long term and uh, tire companies can also participate. C8 is one of the best uh, stock I find it uh, technically. In fact, uh, since we're talking about some of the crude beneficiaries and we did mark Indigo, take a look at SpiceJet. That stock has suddenly spiked 8 to 9% in the trading session right now. So that definitely deserves mention. In fact, it's up almost 9% as we speak. Um, but hear out what the management of Axonoble had to tell us earlier with respect to the impact of crude and what they are witnessing with respect to the demand trends. For us, we've got a very clear focus strategy to deliver growth and be in the top two in the incremental growth, as you've seen in the quarter that went by, we are focused on that at this point of time. And between all our verticals of paints and cow coatings, we are trying to make sure we do it. How are we going about it? You may have just read, we've just announced an addition of 5,000 ton capacity in our Gwalior for our powder business. That's one of our fast going business. And hope now with the capacity augmented at Gwalior, we should be able to serve our customers, particularly in the northern and eastern part of the country. And the team is doing a fabulous job. Uh, the same for our uh, you know, paints business, our marine and protective business. Our focus is really to drive the growth and be in the top two on growth. Okay, point taken. So that's the management of Axon Noble. In fact, let me bring on board uh, Sharad as well to talk to us about the Swiggy IPO because that's expected to hit the bosses anytime. In fact, the company is likely to file this week itself and that would mean more competition coming in for Zomato as well. Let's pull up perhaps Zomato stock price as well because I'm not talking about Axon Noble, the graphics which are there on the screen. But let's pull up in fact Zomato because that's the stock which is right now perking up 3% higher as we speak and that could be perhaps uh, a bit of an excitement that it's going to get appear in the listed space. Sharat, tell us what the expectations are with respect to Swiggy, the valuations, when it could hit the bosses. Well, as a soft bag, Swiggy is expected to file its IPO papers this week. This is coming at the back of some media reports and it's expected that they would be raising a billion dollars. That's roughly more than 8,400 crore rupees. Also, the expectation is that the SEBI approval is awaited for this and the details of the offering and the timing is still not decided yet. Now, of course, it's expected that the company is aiming for a $15 billion plus valuation. Also, the key shareholders in Swiggy, they include the names such as Prosos, SoftBank, Elevation Capital, GIC and Tencent and also Qatar Investment Authority. Now, let's see how Zomato and Swiggy, they pair up with each other as per the FI24 numbers. For revenue itself, it looks even stevens at roughly 1200 odd crore rupees for both the companies. 
but Zomato has turned profitable and Swiggy has not. The average order value is also coming at almost 428 rupees. If you look at the other operational numbers, the monthly transacting users, the restaurant partners, the cities where the, both the companies are present in, they generally are seeing that Zomato is having a higher share going ahead and also speaking of which market share is something which you'll be watching out for where Swiggy is having almost 46 percent while Zomato is having the lion share of almost 54 percent. Now of course the valuations is something which you'll be looking out for Zomato in the current market scenario is having a 29 billion dollar valuation and that itself from our unlisted channel checks we got to know that the Swiggy's market valuation could range between 15 to almost 18 billion dollars. Also the quick commerce that is also everyone is looking out for for Swiggy it's in Mart for Zomato, it's Blinkit, and over here itself, the revenue part. If you look at it, Swiggy is still half as compared to Zomato, but the city's presence and the number of dark rooms that's also almost equal when it comes to both the players. This is going to turn out to be, of course, a very watched IPO, much like Bajaj Housing as well. Devang just wanted to get your thoughts in on the kind of valuation that. Uh, uh, Zomato is currently quoting and uh, you know we don't know what pricing etc is going to be the detail of um, for Swiggy that is but just wanted to understand given that these are um, you know the only two players in the market right now how is it that you would stack up uh, Zomato's valuations? See honestly on the, on the valuation front if you look at both these businesses uh, they would probably trade at a bit of a if I can use that word crazy valuations why? Uh, because there will always be a scarcity premium for this type of businesses. And we we know that at least Zomato is now that way profitable. And in, in fact, uh, uh, Blinkit has done uh, very well. Uh, uh, the apprehension that the people earlier had when the IPO of Zomato had come, uh, and you saw the seesaw that happened on the, on the stock price, uh, uh, both on the upside as well as in the downside, uh, uh, that was because, yes, India still more or less uh, values companies on profits rather than on revenues. So once uh, the operational profit starts to follow and the net profit starts to follow, uh, uh, I think then the valuation actually starts to sort of develop a little more. I think what people have seen is that models, these models are quite successful, right? So uh, a lot of these models have even made restaurants successful. So uh, right now the ordering activity in India, and you look at the uh, the per order realization for even a Zomato or a Swiggy that are, that have been uh, on the rise. So the sense one gets here is because this these are only two companies and the second to get listed. Uh, both of this would, uh, in, the, in the shorter to medium term, the beneficiaries of a duopoly uh, that persists. And of course, then the, the, the race will be more who grabs the market share a little more and who retains the market share. I think that will be worth seeing. But yes, as I said, uh, we would probably be a bit more, uh, we'll watch the space rather than immediately jumping the gun and getting into one of those. And taken, so not jumping the gun, but waiting and seeing what really turns out to be the case. But time for the BTSC trade. Nuresh, what's on your buy today, sell tomorrow idealist? So first is a buy on InfoEdge Nokri. The stock has hit a new all-time high, good momentum here. Stop loss at 78.40, target price of 8,000. Second is a buy on Marico, again a new 52-week high here. Stop loss at 690, target price of 705. Okay, that's a Marico and uh, a buy on Marico as we speak right now. Devang, where within FMCG are your preferences? See, ideally, what we have seen is uh, a couple of businesses, for example, uh, uh, food and beverages. Uh, just giving a classic example, again, not recommending. Uh, but uh, we have a portfolio company in Varun Beverages, which we know uh, has uh, uh, delivered around, I can say, the last five, six years have been stellar for the company. And since 16, seven, eight years also, I think people who have sort of got even allotment I would have made the 17, 18. Next. And I think uh, the company venturing out into uh, into the operations in South Africa as well as the Indian operations also doing very well. Uh, I think yes, this is this is one which probably is a re-rating candidate, and I think it's into uh, uh, getting into segments which are sort of uh, unexplored so far, uh, and the segment size, the so opportunity size is also rising, and the market share is sort of also rising. So I think uh, these are types of businesses which one need to look into. Having said that, even traditional FMCG businesses which operate, uh, which are typically large cap uh, the types, the actual types or the ITC types, there is also a tinge of recovery seen over there in terms of management uh, uh, commentary as well as body language and even if the rural consumption pattern changes uh, post elections, post monsoon, I think the next two, three months in the festive season, I, can, I, th I think a good volume growth uh, can be seen in traditional FMCG type of businesses as well. Okay, that's the take coming in on FMCG right now. 
In the meantime, uh, Devang have to talk about Bajaj Housing. What a listing it has been and it's still holding on to that 135 odd percent kind of gain. Uh, for those who were lucky to get the IPO allotment, uh, what do they do now after today's gains? It's at 165 now. Valuations uh, would be stretched if I if I uh, if I uh, try and uh, analyze or get more into analysis. I think it is uh, clearly around say six six and a half times, which is expensive uh, than most of its peers. But what supports Bajaj Group is very typically. Uh, the heritage of the Bajaj group, uh, uh, the wealth creation that has happened inside the group, the management quality, uh, the integrity, as well as the industry that it functions into, right? We talked about financialization, we talked about real estate. Now, what better proxy play than a, than a, than a, a company coming out from the Bajaj group uh, and, and, and being a pioneer into a sort of housing finance? Uh, of course, the base is still lower. What supports this company is, I think, the base being lower. Uh, huge database that this company has uh, uh, and I think the, the trust from, from the investors as well as the trust from the uh, community who sort of borrows from that is also something which uh, would help. As I said, these are more qualitative parameters. Uh, quantifying uh, uh, quantifying this is, is difficult because as we see right from Ola Electric to a lot of the host of companies which got listed in the past seven, uh, past I can say seven, eight, ten months uh, have sort of uh, again uh, exceeded expectations. So I think I'll not uh, put anything uh, to the table immediately, but it's a hold for some Somebody who has sort of got uh, allotment and somebody who wants to buy, this is a great company, good company, but you probably can wait for a bit of a correction if somebody wants to get into it. Point taken, but since we're talking about Bajaj Housing Finance, here are what Ravi Dharamshi has to say because the valuations now are close to or actually over five times the uh, price to book on this one, making it the most expensive housing finance company listed in India. In the short run, market would be ending up factoring in a lot of the uh, positives and it will be difficult to justify these kind of valuation and earning returns from them over a longer term period becomes difficult. However, there are technical reasons why this overvaluation is happening with HDFC limited uh, uh, becoming part of the HDFC fold. There is actually no large mortgage lender uh, separately listed. So that will mean this stock will become uh, a must own for most of the funds and they, it will become part of most of the indices starting at a 1 lakh crore plus kind of a market cap. It will become part of the large cap indices and it, it will uh, all the foreign funds will also look to buy into that. So from that perspective, I can understand why it is happening. But, I, but at the same time, I, uh, I, mean, I mean, it becomes very difficult to generate uh, outsized returns from these valuations going forward. Okay, that's Ravi Dharamshi also talking about what to now do with uh, the Bajaj Housing Finance um, listed shares, which made their debut today. In the meantime, uh, you know, it's really status quo. Uh, we haven't really moved much in the last half an hour or so. Still holding on to that 70, 71 odd point gain on the futures. 25,444 is where we're currently at. Bajaj Finance rank underperformer today, three and a quarter percent downtick. Unilever, SBI Live, Britannia, Adani Port. Titan and SBI are some of your other laggards. In fact, it's quite intriguing that SBI perhaps is the only banking underperformer today as opposed to what the private banking lot is doing because everything from an Axis to an HDFC bank, they're all holding out pretty okay in trade. Uh, Axis, of course, has made a fresh life high as well. Devang, any... Um, you know, stocks very quickly uh, from within the private banking pack which you think can be bought? Uh, honestly, if you ask me today, uh, what what is the construct of our portfolio? Immediately, uh, we 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 are not buying banks as such very aggressively. Yes, in a traditional multi-cap, large-cap portfolio, we hold certain banks like ICICI uh, or or even an Axis Bank uh, for that matter. Uh, but today, if I construct a new portfolio, there are so many different themes available. As I said, across capex, across financialization, across uh, uh, consumption, that I would immediately not vote for a bank. Yes, as I said, uh, there are FPIs who are going to come into the picture uh, sooner than later. Uh, this banks which have underperformed over the last two three years horizon uh, they might come back to the fore but as i said uh, if the objective is to generate 18 20 25 percent type of return over the next two three years uh, this is not the space that immediately i would, I would get into uh, for for material gains 
Hey Devang, on that note, we let you go. Thank you so much for making time and speaking with us. Nuresh, you as well. Thanks so much for joining us today. Just taking stock of which are the big events lined up tomorrow. And of course, Fed event is the one uh, that we ne really need to watch out for. The two-day meet on the US interest rates will commence tomorrow, which will be end of day for us tomorrow. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the expectation is that there could be a big a case of a 50 basis point increase as well. When we started off the month, the talk was there is going to be likely 25 basis point cut. But now the expectation has turned. In fact, till yesterday, it was a 50-50 chance of 25 cuts or 50 basis point cut. This uh, morning when we are checking, it's turned in favor of a 50 basis point cut with uh, more than 60% of the participants expecting a 50 basis point uh, cut coming in rather than a 25 basis point cut. So that remains important. Apart from that, US industrial production as well as retail sales data will be out, so that's important to track. Uh, there is also the fact that India WPI will come out tomorrow, so that's something back home to watch out for. K. Trival, the Chief Minister of Delhi, has said that he will resign within two days, so tomorrow that could be the big political headline that we'll be watching out for. And Prime Minister Modi is visit visiting Bhubaneswar, so just taking a look at what all of that is happening. And of course, here in Mumbai, there could be uh, a lot of traffic jams uh, tomorrow because of the fact that there is going to be Ganpati resurgence. So plan your day accordingly as well. But for today, it's a pretty much okay kind of day that we have seen for the markets. We're ending in the green 25,378. Yes, not that 25,400 would have looked uh, very nice to close above that, but just about that level. Banking index outperforming today with that four tenth of a percent gain coming in. Broader markets a bit more muted. Mid cap 100 doing okay, but the small cap index was a bit tepid. So just around that 19,530 mark. A lot of losers which were from the housing finance space today. Uh, LIC housing for instance, you also had PNB housing coming under pressure. And despite that bumper listing of Bajaj housing finance, Bajaj finance was actually lower. Remember the stock had run up on Friday. But uh, given the fact Bajaj Housing Finance has seen a solid listing ending at the highest point of the trading session, a lot of volumes on that one, a lot of buying interest still uh, being witnessed as far as the bourses is concerned. So that remains an important talking point. BSC, 18% higher. Godfrey Phillips, 11% gain. Adani Twins of Adani Green as well as Power were in focus. A lot of sugar stocks, so Thraveni Engineering, Thermax on that 500 crore order win, Dixon Tech on account of that partnership. All of these stocks ended in the green and so did the rest of the market. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Closing Trades from the entire team who put the show together. Thank you so much for tuning in.